Okay, coach is ready for questions. We'll start here on the second row on the left. Coach Heifel, Josh Rowe, WTBC in Chattanooga. Can you compare how you feel right now compared to where you were last year at media days after the season you had last year? Yeah, just uh, another year into it. Um, it's so different with your players. Uh, a complete understanding of what it's going to look like for, you know, 80% of your roster. You know what I mean? What game days are going to look like. What tra uh, training camp's going to look like. Your staff. You know, the continuity that we were able to keep uh, with our staff. Really, everybody coming back. Old and young coaches and, and support staff. And, you know, that's really changed the way that we've worked from the time that we got back in January. Um, sure, we redefined everything. But, man, it was really about our daily work habits and how we grow. Uh, immediately from the time that we got foot uh, back on campus instead of, you know, building relationships with new people. And, and uh, you know, for us, uh, really excited about what we've done in, you know, the first three quarters of our, our off season. Uh, excited about training camp. Uh, I think we have a great understanding of who we are, what we're about, and how we want to play in all three phases of the game. Now it's about competing and growing as we get into training camp. Coach, right side, back row. Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I know you faced the Tigers before. Just curious, have you ever played at or coached at uh, Tiger Stadium and, and your thoughts with that matchup? We did uh, when I was at the, the University of Missouri tonight that uh, I don't want to go back to. Um, but uh, uh, excited about that. The, the great thing and the reason you want to coach and the reason you want to play inside of this league is you get an opportunity to go play the best. And, and uh, you know, certainly that's a great program and uh, a great uh, avenue or venue uh, to, uh, to play in. It's one that when we get to that point in our season, uh, I know our coaches and players will be extremely excited about. It. On the aisle, third row. Hey, coach. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Sweet. Ben Bobick, Local 3 in Chattanooga. You preach a lot about culture and accountability. What's changed from this culture from year one to two that has you this team excited and, and you heading into year two? Yeah, our, our sense of accountability at each point, each you know cross section of, of the the off season, so dramatically different than where we were the year before, and dramatically different than even where we were when we finished the season. Uh, leadership is so different. Uh, each Wednesday during our off season before we got to spring ball, you know, it was team day. It was leadership. It was communication. Uh, not just from the leaders that you guys know their names, but from everybody inside of our program, from the young guys inside of our program. And uh, because of that, you know, how we practice during the course of spring ball was completely different. Much more ownership from within by our players. And championship seasons, great seasons happen because of the leadership and the work habits uh, and the accountability factor from within the locker room. It doesn't happen because your coaching staff is, is different. You know, it happens because of what's inside that locker room. And I love the growth that, that we've had and, and uh, excited about, you know, where we're at, but where we got to get to and, and how, we, how we're going to get there. On the aisle, back row. Hey, Coach Page with WVLT. You talked about the three guys you brought here today contributing to a lot of success within this team. What specifically have they done to strengthen this program? Yeah, I think – you know, if you just looked at three of them all together, the first thing that I would grab is uh, their leadership, right? Truly feeling their energy, their presence, their focus, their intentionality, you know, how we're going to work. They're not just great teammates, they're great leaders, and, and they force guys around them to raise their level of what they're doing. That would be number one. Um, number two would just be their consistent work habits and how different they are, you know, for Trey in particular, different than he was a year ago. Uh, for Cedric, he's continued to heighten that journey. Um, uh, for Handon, the purposefulness of, of how he's worked. You know, very intentional in the morning being in there and studying offensive football uh, defenses, just scheme, structure, and how we need to attack it, understanding it from a defensive side of perspective, and, and then uh, fundamentally how much he's grown. Left side, fourth row. Coach Chris Yao, Main Street Media. Last season, Several transfer players made a big impact for your team. You have a couple of guys in the secondary who have transferred in. What kind of impact do you feel like they will have on that particular uh, secondary? Yeah, I think as a program, we're deeper than we were a year ago. Uh, earlier today, I you mentioned you know we had 69 scholarship players as we embarked on, you know, training camp a year ago, and. and you know, most people last year were probably at 90, closer to 95 with, with six-year seniors, and, and uh, we were thin. Um, we are deeper. We're not as deep as we need to be, um, but we are deeper. The transfers that have come in, I think they're in a position, you know, physically and mentally, uh, when we start training camp to, to push and to compete for playing time, for jobs, and, you know, on defense, on special teams. <coughs> I think there's greater depth 
in particular on the defensive side of the football in our secondary, you know, at the second level linebackers. And we have good competition that needs to take place on the, on the first line with our defensive line too. And you know, that's one of the places that we got to grow. We got to be able to affect the quarterback more on third and long situations, not with pressure, uh, although we're going to need that at times too, but just with our front four and being able to win some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. Front row on the right. Anthony Patterson with the Atlanta boys. Um, with Hendon, what has, <laughs> What has impressed you since last season when you first came in until now about him? And what do you feel is the next step for him to just, I guess, take that next step? Yeah, I, I think for him, uh, there, there's a lot of you know key words that you could throw out there. But to me, as much as anything, is his ability to handle every situation that, that's thrown at him. You know, positive, negative, uh, you know, adverse situations. It doesn't matter. He keeps coming back, and he gets better from every one of those situations. And uh, a young man that's gained so much in confidence, I, I think, in, you know, what we do offensively, how we coach him, how we help build them as players and as people has, has had a positive impact on, on his performance on the field. But he's had a huge part of that in soaking those things up and really growing over the last 18 months and, and uh, so excited about his future and uh, you know what he's done in the offseason to become a better player and a better better leader. Front row, Coach. Good morning, Coach. Uh, A.P. Stidham, WHEP Foley, Alabama. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Brew McCoy and how he's adapting to your system and, and what do you see for his future? Yeah, a young man that uh, we're excited to have in our program. He's handled himself with such uh, poise, grace, uh, competitive, great competitive nature since he, he's come into our program and uh, been about going about his work habits the, the right way and been really consistent. Um, you know, extremely gifted physically, big, strong ability to make competitive catches out on the perimeter. Uh, his best football is still a long ways ahead of him, and I say that as a positive. Uh, and uh, really excited about getting him uh, on the grass here as we get going uh, in training camp. You know, a guy that didn't have spring ball uh, is just getting integrated into what we're doing offensively. You know, with like some of the transfers that we had a year ago on offense, um, you know, there's a growth process to understanding how we play. He's got to soak those things up and, and uh, be able to handle, handle the tempo in particular in a really positive way here early as we get going. Right side, third row. As you're around with 24-7 sports, Coach, with, with Trayvon making sort of a, I don't want to say a jump in, in terms of leadership, but this offseason, have you kind of seen comparisons of, of what he's done to what Theo did last year, and, and do you hope that has the same kind of impact on the field and thought? Yeah, uh, yes, and, and I, I don't <laughs> – those are lofty expectations, too. Uh, Theo was a great player for us a year ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and played at such an elite level. Um, but – but Theo's a six-year guy that, that hadn't played a lot of football, <clears throat> really only special teams. You know, his ability to understand every position on defense, not just the secondary, but every position on defense, allowed him to play extremely fast and physical and, and anticipate and have his eyes in the right spot. It led to him playing at a really high level, uh, which is why he got drafted and why he's going to have a great career uh, in the NFL. I firmly believe that. But you know, who he was off the field and how he approached going into our building every single day is why he made those strides. And Trey, I think after, you know, the season coming back, kind of reset, relooked and, and, and saw what happened with Theo and said, man, I, I know that there's more out there for me. I'm really proud of what Trey's done, man. Physically, you've seen him. He looks completely different. His movement on the football field is different because of how he's worked. And uh, his best football is ahead of him. We have uh, high expectations for him this fall. Left side, third row. Hey, Coach. Kelly and Sitz, W-A-T-E. How do you measure growth from year one to year two? And what sort of jump do you hope the team makes from year one to year two? Yeah, um, you measure it in the growth, and the, the standards that you have in, inside of your building. You measure that daily, weekly with, uh, with your players. You put that in front of them. Uh, physically, they can see the, the strides that they've made and, and how they've grown. Um, but each phase, it's about each day and, and, and winning, winning the day, winning the set, winning the rep. Um, but that's true in everything that you're doing. It, it's your meals. It's your training room. It, it's, it's class. And, and uh, I'm really proud. Like, you know, the last three semesters, our team GPA has gone up every semester. Their best three semesters in the history of Tennessee football. <clears throat> How we're doing off the field, those things show up in, in what you do on the field, too. And our players are bought into that. Um, you know, wins, losses, I don't know. We got high expectations for this season. We want to have the best brotherhood in, in college football, continuing to build that culture. 
and uh, go out and compete each and every week. On the aisle, back row. Hey, Coach, uh, Jamal Kennedy, WSFA 12 News in Montgomery. I want to ask you about Jordan Thomas, an incoming freshman. Uh, he's coming in. He came out of high school as a, as a quarterback, and now you're switching him over to the defensive side of the ball. Just curious to know, like, you know, um, your, your hopes for him and, and what you want to see him make strides here in his first year at Tennessee. Yeah, Jordan's done a little bit of everything. Uh, part of what he did on the offensive side of the ball is why you want him. He's smart. He's competitive. He cares. Man, he's grown during the course of the summer. He's very, very, very competitive. Uh, you know, first week install, I think he felt a little bit overwhelmed. Man, he felt really good after week two. He came up to me. He's going to make a point that I know that he had a great week. Um, I love his energy and, and, uh, and how he works as a young guy. We have high expectations for him to become a great player, but a great leader inside of our program, too. Left side. <clears throat> Coach uh, Reggie Chapman, uh, 11 Live TV here in Atlanta. Um, Couple questions. Uh, one, you obviously won a national championship. I'm wondering, when you played against Georgia, was there something that you saw maybe that kind of related between that team and maybe the team that you were on back in the day? And also between um, Georgia, just, jo just Georgia's team and the champion I'm, I'm the championship to... championship aspect of it um, between what you had and back in 2000. And I'm also wondering. Um, I think at Missouri they played at Missouri, when, if I'm not mistaken, for, your, for to be able to play in uh, Athens. What's it going to be like? Uh, we played both, uh, played at Missouri uh, through a late pick, uh, got beat uh, late fourth down, and then uh, I still remember that one. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, in Athens, uh, you know, we weren't able to sustain things uh, offensively in the second half to, to keep up with them. <clears throat> great program, great players. Um, you know, their championship team from a year ago had a lot more draft picks than, than the, the team that I played on, certainly in the, in the first couple of years after uh, we won that. Um, they're talented, they're tough, they're competitive. Um, they had winning attributes, man. And, uh, you know, those are things that we're trying to build inside of our program and, and uh, uh, excited about what we've done up until this point. Uh, that'll be a great venue for, for college football, it is. And, and uh, um, when we get to that point in the season, it's one that uh, our staff and our players are going to be excited about playing. Last two questions. I'll be on the back row here, first on the aisle. Uh, you talked earlier about some of your top guys kind of being no names last season. Now they're on the watch list for a lot of awards. What has it been like and how rewarding is it to see their hard work paying off and not yeah. only you notice, but the nation does? It's the great thing and it's one of the toughest things about college football, right? You don't have them on a long-term contract where you got them for a decade. Uh, they're out the door after four years and, and – uh, but it's a, it's a great thing too. So much opportunity, and and uh, you know, for the guys that are here, look at their journey from where they were a year ago to where they are now, uh, and uh, excited about that. Really proud of them too, and and uh, it's a great thing. You know, college football to me is is such a unique sport and, and the greatest sport that we have. Just 18 to 22 year olds going through that maturation process, learning how to to become the person. Uh, that they want to be and become the player too and it's, it's a great journey and, and one that uh, you know I don't take for granted that I get a chance to be a part of and, and uh, excited about who's next right you know there's names that uh, I maybe haven't talked about today or that you guys don't know they're going to step up and, and have great seasons and, and play critical roles in our success. Final question on the end. Dan, Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Coach you're one of several SEC head coaches that jumped from the group of five to the SEC. Uh, your observations on the biggest differences between coaching in the group of five and coaching in this conference and, and maybe some things that are similar as well. You want to coach in this conference because it's college football as good as it gets. Most competitive league in, in all of, of college sports. Uh, you get to coach against the best. You get to play against the best and you got to reset every single Saturday afternoon or, or Saturday evening, man. And uh, once you get into the season, man, it's coming at you fast and furious. And, and that's uh, the chase, the journey, the competitive arena that you want to be in. That's why players come to Tennessee. They want to play in front of 100 plus thousand people. They want to feel that energy, 40,000 people when they get off the bus and, and take uh, the journey down Peyton Manning way. Um, they want to be a part of those things. and, and uh, uh, there's nothing more invigorating, challenging, and uh, nothing gives you more energy than, than those opportunities, and it's what you wake up for every day. Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Have a great day.